the Ten Commandments. All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew Pastilius, and welcome back to another Bible study adventure episode. This is going to be episode two of Bible Study Adventures. And if you haven't seen the first episode of Bible Study Adventures, make sure you guys go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description and also a end screen at the end of the video if you guys watch the end. But if you guys notice right now, I am downstairs because um, probably like the quietest place in the house. If I go upstairs, you guys can hear a lot of background noise. So I came down here where it's more quiet and reasonable to record for the second episode i wanted to kind of cover the basics you know of god's word all right so without further ado let's get on with the interact let's begin at the book of exodus starting at chapter 20. well i'm just gonna start i'm just gonna read from verse 1 up to verse 17. all right so and god spake all these words saying i am the lord thy god which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. All right, starting at verse three. This is commandment number one. Thou shalt not have no gods before me, no other gods before me. Now, an easy way to remember this, no other gods, when people say no, they kind of wave their finger like this. You know, Sonic does a little wavy thing with his finger. Well, easy way to remember it, it's commandment number one. No other gods. And make sure that you guys put God first before anything because if you put other stuff before God, then you're basically making that your God and that's not a good thing to do. The second commandment. Verse four. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath the earth. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Alright, so basically, don't commit idolatry. Basically, what idolatry means is like you're worshiping idols. It doesn't have to be a physical idol. Like it could be anything like it could probably be a video game. It could be shoes, materialistic things. It could be a person like a celebrity, for example. I'm not going to name any celebrities, but people are making humans, regular people, just like you and I, people that take dumps, people that put pants on one leg at a time people that wake up in the morning people that have to take showers or at least should take showers we all breathe we all need water all of us are human but some people treat other humans especially celebrities any person that's famous they treat them like that's their god i'm here to tell you we cannot do that we can't. There's only one God, one true King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and that is Jesus Christ. That is the only true and living God. That's the person I'm going to serve. That's the person I'm going to put first in my life. And that's the person that you should do as well. If you treat that like that's your God, that's a sin because God is a jealous God. So you do not want to do that. Don't bow down to anybody. And I mean nobody. Only Jesus Christ. Because the moment you bow down to an idol is the moment that you bring a curse upon your life. All right, let's continue at verse six. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. The third commandment. All right, so verse number seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Taking the Lord's name in vain. Well, first, let's define the word vain. The word vain means worthless, emptiness, nothingness. Some people tend to like misuse his name, basically. Like when somebody says, OMG, like it's not just that, it's more than that. It's like basically us, the people, the Christians, how we represent God to others. We're the ambassadors of Christ. 
we're supposed to represent Christ. And if we're just, our actions, and I'm pretty sure all of us are guilty of this because nobody's perfect, but if we claim to have God on our side, we declare his name, but then like we go and act a fool, that's using God's name in vain. If we use God's name to justify our actions, like let's say for example, you commit a sin and then like you say afterward, oh God told me to do this. Well, if you're doing the sin, I'm pretty sure that is not God telling you to do that. We can't just use God's name to justify our actions, our sins. There's no way in the world that God would tell you to rob a bank, then take a dump, wipe your poop all over the security cameras, and leave with all the money. It's probably just you saying that, and then you're just trying to use God, saying that he told me to sin. So we need to be careful of how we represent ourselves to others. Although God's name has power, we shouldn't just abuse it. Abusing God's name, that's taking the name in vain. Hey, that rubbish. All right, now, let's continue on, starting at, at verse 8. The fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor, and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all them that is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So basically, the Sabbath day should be a day of rest. We may be working as hard as we possibly can, but there's probably going to come a point where all of us are going to get tired and we just need rest. Us being humans, our bodies need rest. That's why we go to sleep. If we don't get rest, we're not gonna be able to, to function right and do what we need to do. Basically what God's saying is that the Sabbath day, use that time for the Lord. Sabbath day is basically Sunday, going to church, putting God first and serving him. We need to make time for the Lord. How would God look at us if we spend all this time trying to make some extra cash probably perhaps or, and then we only give like a couple hours to God. How would God, that wouldn't look right on us. Now don't get me wrong, nothing's wrong with working. In fact, God tells us to work. But don't choose money over God. And you might be saying to yourselves, well, I have to work in order to buy this or in order to pay rent or whatever. But I'm pretty sure if you put God first, God will take care of the rest. The fifth commandment. Honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Honor your parents. Listen to your parents. I know sometimes it can be very annoying and very frustrating, but you just have to do. You just have to listen to them, man. I mean, look what happened to me. I don't know if you guys watched that video where I explained what happened to my ankle when I was playing basketball. Basically, I was outside playing basketball, so my dad told me to go back inside and stop playing basketball. But what did I do? This. No. I didn't listen. Guess what? what? I broke my ankle from not listening. If I had listened, I would not have broken my ankle that day. The consequences. The consequences. I don't know if you guys even understand that, but it's not worth it, bro. And plus, God tells us if we listen to our parents, you have longer days on earth. I don't know about you, but if you want to have a long life, I know being on earth is only temporary, but if you want to live life to the fullest, living for God and enjoying everything that God had for us intentionally, just honor your parents. I know it may seem like our parents are trying to hurt us, they're actually trying to protect us. If you want to have a long life on earth, listen to your parents. The sixth commandment. All right, so verse 13, thou shalt not kill. The sixth commandment, you guys, that's pretty simple. Don't kill, don't murder. Nobody should be killing each other. Right? Like all these wars that are going on. Also, when it says thou shalt not murder or kill, that is also including yourself. So people that commit suicide, once they commit suicide, that sin cannot be undone. And when they stand before God's judgment, it's going to be a sad day for them because they're not going to enter into God's rest and kingdom. Whatever you're going through right now, God can handle it if you put your full trust in him. Because I'm telling you right now, 
it will not be worth it for you taking your own life and then having to pay all eternity for it. Everything has a cost, everything has a consequence. So everything that you're going through on earth now, all of it is only temporal. So once you take your own life, that's it. Your fate is sealed and your soul is going to be forever in hell. There is no going back once you do that. So I'm here to tell you, my fellow brothers and sisters, there is hope in Jesus Christ. And you may not know me very well, and I may not know you very well. But what I do know is that Jesus Christ loves you, and he can set you free from all your bondages or whatever you're going through. So never give up on life. Never give up on Christ, because Christ will never give up on you. The seventh commandment. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Committing adultery is basically having sexual intercourse with somebody that you're not married to. First of all, that's morally wrong. If we do that, that's a sin. There's a lot of kids. Well, technically, I'm still a kid, 18. Legally, that's an adult, but in here, we're still little kids, if you were to say. But there's a lot of kids that I know that I went to school with that are pregnant. I'm like, what, what the heck? What the heck happened? I don't know about you, but I'm not about the sex before marriage thing. I'm gonna wait until the time comes and the time is right. I don't care. I don't care if I made fun of. I'm gonna do what's right and what God says, because God's word is God's word. Because if you were to take your last breath while we were doing that with the other person, we go straight to hell. And I don't want to go to hell, bro. So I'm not. And even when I am married, I'm not gonna go cheat on my wife and do that, because that's not. First of all, that's not even right morally. There should be an age where we know what's right and what's wrong. And if we do what's wrong, we it's like we can feel it. I'm not doing that, bro. I don't care. You shouldn't do that either. That's one. That's God's word. God's word is God's word. We can't go against it. And let's say you never even had sex with somebody. Well, let me tell you what God's word also says. Look at this scripture. And let's say, for an example, people try to deny God's word or they don't believe in it. Just because they don't believe or just because they deny God's word. That doesn't mean God's word still stands. God's word's still gonna stand. And that's not gonna change any of the facts either. So people can deny all they want, but God's word is God's word and it will never change. And let's say you're struggling with this type of stuff. I'm here to tell you, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and we are more than conquerors. All right, now let's continue on. Picking up at verse 15. The eighth commandment. Thou shalt not steal. That's pretty simple. Don't take what's not yours. I mean, let's say for an example, you need water and food and people that are homeless and that can't afford. I mean, it's still wrong to do that. God tells us to work. If we want to have food and water, we have to work. I'm sure if we put God first in our lives and we trust in him, I'm pretty sure he's going to take care of us. The ninth commandment. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That means don't lie. Every single last one of us have lied before. And if you say you hadn't, then you just lied. Nobody is perfect. I believe in honesty is the best policy, even if it hurts the person. Flattery is considered kind of lying because, well, not kind of, flattery is lying, bro. Whenever, you, like, let's say if your friend asks you, hey, how does this look? And if you don't tell them, if you just lie to them to try to say, hey, that looks cool, bro. And deep down, you know, that does not look good at all. Flattery is just not, not the way to go. If, if I'm a real friend, I'm going to tell my friend straight up not to do that or not to wear those things. Because the truth is the truth. The truth has a spirit. Also, gossiping can also be used as a form of lying because you don't even know if that stuff is true. If you actually want to know the truth about somebody or someone, get it from the source. Don't go around and telling other people's business if you don't know whether it's true or not. Please, just tell the truth. Be honest. And don't be somebody that compliments other people if it's not genuine. Because that's lying too. Alright, let's continue on. Pick up at verse 17. The tenth commandment. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. 
basically covetousness means to desire to desire something that somebody else has or let's say for example to lust after a woman that you wanted so bad like you desire it so bad you look at a woman or a girl and it's like oh yeah i have to get this girl i want her so bad just for just to have sexual intercourse that's covetousness or let's say you look at somebody else that has let's probably say like that has so much money you look at them and you're like, man, I want that money too. So you go out your way trying to get what somebody else has. First of all, just be grateful for what you have because there's some people who have nothing or have it way worse than you. If you have a roof on top of your head, if you have food, clothes, water, heat, AC, you got it good. There's some people who don't have what I just stated. So if you try to get something that somebody else has, if you desire it, that's covetousness. And if you're trying to get a girl, or woman just to have sex with them, that's also covetousness too. You shouldn't just look at a woman and desire them because of their body. No, that was not God's intention. Yeah, you're supposed to like girls if you're a guy and if you're a girl, you're supposed to like guys, but don't take it to another level. All right, ladies and gentlemen, those are the 10 commandments. The first commandment, no other gods. Jesus Christ, true King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Second commandment, don't commit idolatry. Third commandment, don't take God's name in vain. Fourth commandment, keep the Sabbath day holy and rest upon it. Fifth commandment, honor thy mother and thy father. Sixth commandment, thou shalt not murder or kill. Seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. Eighth commandment, thou shalt not steal. Ninth commandment, thou shalt not lie. And the tenth commandment, thou shalt not commit covetousness. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys learned something new today. This is God's word. I trust this word 100%. He's trying to go against God's word. We need to have a foundation of what God tells us to do and not to do. Because there are some things, some pretty jacked up things in this world that's going against God's word. I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. The Constitution, the amendments, this is way more important than that. I'm telling you, bro. God's word is God's word and it will never change. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys if you guys aren't already, make sure you guys subscribe. As I said, this is gonna be the second episode of Bible Study Adventures, although I'm a guy who plays video games, but I also need to share God's word. I haven't really chose a particular day to upload these uh, Bible Study Adventures on. We'll have to see in the future, ladies and gentlemen. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you guys continue to put God first. Accept Jesus Christ today if you have not already. And until next time, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Boy! You guys didn't see anything. Forget this. Oh, I'm gonna make sure this because it is not I was about to say. Alright.